Hey coach, uh, Chris mentioned Javon and just knowing him over the years. And he, he mentioned also that book is just a guy that kind of grabs your attention when he competes the way he does what I, I know what the answer is. So it's kind of funny that I'm asking it, but what do you see when guys who can, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, coach, but what do you see when guys are competing at that high of a level and how they kind of click with each other? Cause Javon, Javon's a guy who's been in the league only two years and Chris has really noticed him already. Well, I think guys like Chris and, you know, the, the high level guys who also have, um, they, they have a, a bit of a, a, the guys call it dog. I call it competitive edge. You, you kind of notice it in other guys. You especially notice it against when you play against those guys, when you compete against them, you notice the guys that just bring it every single night. And especially when you have to go against that guy. So maybe it's caught Chris's eye uh, just watching, you know, Javon in practice uh, with Book and, and Mikhail. You know, they, they, they just play hard all of the time. You know, they, they may not be, um, you know, high, high level talent like MVPs or the MVPs of the NBA, but they, they have MVP effort every night. And that's, that's why you see these guys improving a little bit. So Chris, you know, he has a, a bit of a market on a lot of these guys with his AAU program. He sees all of these players before they even get to the league. And so I'm sure he's watched Javon uh, for a few years. I think he has a bit of a camp or something like that where a lot of the, the young guards come through there. And so I'm sure he's got knowledge of a number of guards. And I think Javon was a guy that went through that camp. Next up is Christo Saltis with Sport DNA in Greece, followed by Brendan Klein. Hello, coach. How is it make your game plan, uh, Chris uh, presents in the team, and also with uh, 15, 16 days until the tip off of the season? Do you feel that uh, your team will gonna be ready? Well, Christo, so, uh, you know, as far as game planning with with Chris, uh, you know, he he saw the way we played, and uh, you know that that may have been appealing to him. You'd have to ask him that, but I think, you know, we, we'd like to think we're a team that, you know, plays a certain way and, and that may be appealing to some guys. At the same time, you know, I want to tweak a few things to fit his skill set. You know, he, he's a guy that can play in every level of, of the offensive side of the ball. He can shoot threes, he can play off the dribble, he can play in the mid range and he can get to the basket, he can throw lobs. And so we wanna, you know, I don't wanna get in his way. That, that's the biggest thing for me is to, you know, tweak a few things that we do, but I also don't wanna get in Chris's way and, and let him use the experience and skill that he has to help us and him. And then as far as getting ready for opening night, um, you know, that's our goal is to try to build up our conditioning, um, come up with a, a package of plays and not try to overdo it. Um, less is more in, in these situations, I think. I'm uh, more focused on concepts and environment, uh, environments, spacing, uh, the way we play as it relates to the offensive end and defensively, um, you know, you just want to be solid to start, I think, I don't think you're going to see a lot of teams with, you know, multi-layered defensive packages to start because a lot of, a lot of teams are like us, they got a bunch of new guys and you're trying to get everybody acclimated. So we're all dealt the same hand. Next up is Brendan Clean with Bright Side of the Sun, followed by Paul Richardson. Hey, Monty, we, we didn't exactly, we didn't talk with you the night of the draft. We talked with James and um, but but he's you and him have kind of been on the same page as far as the draft goes and finding guys who have that capacity to improve kind of a hunger to to soak things in and, and grow within your program. So I guess if you could just speak to what you saw in Jalen that aligned with that and then is that the kind of thing that once you get in a, a gym with him the first few days you can already kind of see that coming to fruition. Well, I think, you know, to start, like th this rookie class is, has been dealt a tough hand. I mean, I've never s seen anything like this. I, I hope we never see it again. You know, normally 
right after being drafted, Jalen would be in the middle of summer league, you know, learning on the fly, playing against guys on his level, uh, guys from overseas. And so that they've been put in a tough spot. Uh, the thing we liked about Jalen was his ability to play on both ends of the floor. Uh, defensively, you know, he was the guy that could give you some rim protection, um, his ability to shoot the ball. But you look at his background and, and, and the way he was raised uh, in somewhat of a, well, not somewhat, a military environment. Uh, he, he's, he's lived a pretty structured, disciplined life. And, and he speaks so highly of his father, but he also fears his father, <laughs> which is something that's uh, pretty cool, uh, get, trying to get my boys to do the same thing. And so that, that led us to believe that he had the capacity to, to deal with a lot, you know, because this rookie class is, you know, you may not see the best players in this class, you know, start to bloom until next, the end of next year and maybe after that because they're, they're learning a lot. They're, you know, three weeks ago, Jalen was in a gym getting shots, trying to figure out where he was going to live. And, and just like that, he's in a training camp, you know, he's trying to guard DeAndre, trying to guard Cam, running off screens. That, that's a lot. But we felt like he had the capacity, the character, the work ethic, the integrity to deal with a situation like this. Next up is Paul Richardson with the Sports K, followed by Dwayne Rankin. Hey, Coach. I got, I got just a couple quick ones here. DeAndre talked about the other day just – how he's changed his attitude. He's ready to go. He's hyped. He's learned a lot. Have you noticed a change from a, a, that change that he's talking about? Just in talking to him, not necessarily on the court. And then two, with all the quote unquote big talent move moves in the NBA, have you just sat and thought about how so many teams that you faced last year will be so different this upcoming season? Uh, yeah, I mean, De DeAndre has had a lot of time in our gym. You know, when we first got here, the guys didn't know us. You know, they, they were <laughs> trying to figure out, you know, who these people were and what was 0.5 and this goofy coach with all these phrases and whatnot. And I, I think we've, I hope we've built up enough equity with our guys that they trust us in the gym. And he's been in the gym for the past three months. Um, he's been diligent about his, the weight room, uh, opportunities that Corey has presented him to grow. And then Mark Bryant has had DA on the floor working on a number of uh, levels in his game. So, you know, he, he understands that his next level is going to be really hard. And, and, and if you, you know, you dive into a conversation with him, he'll tell you like trying to be an elite player and, and live up to, external expectations, his own expectations, it's, it's really hard. And so what I've seen from him is, is more consistency as far as his work is concerned. And I think that's, you know, you get confidence from the work. Um, Paul, what was your second question? Because I think you you were on two different spectrums. I, thanks, Coach. I, I was. I said, and then there's been so many, quote, unquote, big oh, okay. star movement. You know, so many teams are going to look different than what you – Based on, in fact, you know, your team's going to look different. So have you thought about some of all that movement and the difference in the teams? You know, I've, I've seen it, obviously. Um, but once you once you see what other teams are doing, you, you know, for me, it goes right back to focusing on our team and, and trying to figure out the best plan to go forward as far as, me, you know, getting guys to mesh um, on all levels, you know, defense, offense, and in transition. Um, getting to know the new players and, and their personalities and, you know, how they like to play in, in certain environments. So for me, it's like I see other teams, you know, some of the good teams are still good, you know, but I think there's opportunity, a opportunity for us to, to uh, progress and move up in the West. And that's what you want. You know, our expectations have changed. And, and we're happy about that. And the West is tough, but you know, we're, we're a team that's gotten better too. And I think other teams around the league have taken notice of that. And I think they respect us, but you know, I just want to be clear. We, we are still a team that's approaching 500. 
Uh, we did not make the playoffs last year. And when I look at other teams and then I dive into who we are, that's where my mind goes right back to. We're still a team that's below 500. We haven't made the playoffs and we have a lot of work to do. Coach, final two questions will come from Dwayne Rankin with the Arizona Republic and Nicole Jarena. Hey, Farmer. Coach, uh, in, in the, I want to say last year in the bubble, it feels like, anyway, sorry. <laughs> when you guys were in the bubble, um, you talked about being able to adapt because you didn't have, you didn't have guys, you know, during the, that started practice. Rubio wasn't there, Baines. Um, how much is that experience or that experience you're going to have to play into moving forward, you know, because of the inevitability that, that, that that's going to be a, a possibility for, you know, for you guys moving forward? Um, I mean, we, we still talk about that. The, the, um, it's a skill to navigate uncertainty. Um, we, we, we addressed that before we went into the bubble. Uh, we put it up on our screens today um, in the gym so that guys can, you know, remember that. And it might be heightened times 10 um, because we're not in a bubble scenario. Um, we talk to guys about, you know, trying to stay healthy. I wear my mask at home. <laughs> Sometimes I just, you know, you're trying to do everything you can uh, so you don't miss days. And we understand that there could be change this year throughout the league because of the situation we're in. So we, we've talked to our guys, we try to remind them, but yeah, we understand that everybody's lives have changed. And so it did help us in Orlando, but I think we, we have to do even more now because we're not in a bubble environment. We're going to be traveling, um, which was different, will be different than Orlando and you know, to some degree, it seems like around the country, people are just, you know, living life like there is no virus. And, and that's, that's a bit scary. You know what I'm saying? Um, so we, I'm grateful that our doctors, our medical staff, um, all the information that we've been able to give the players has, been, it's been good for all of us to be educated that way. And I think we're going to need it and adhere to it for a while. Hey, Coach, final question comes from Nicole Jarena with Tab Deportes in Puerto Rico. Hi, Coach. Thanks for having me again. No problem. The, the other day you talked about the importance of not having distractions and know each other of the core. Of the core. What is your plan to try to do the same this season with the new member of the teams like Jay Crowder or Chris Paul? Yeah, I mean, we, we do some, you know, some would say it's pretty goofy stuff, but we, we do some things in house that allow for us to get to know each other. Um, I think when you when you know um, a guy's background, you know his history, you know his grind. Um, sometimes there's some commonality there, and, and that brings you together. And then there's times where you meet somebody from a totally different culture, country, and you learn about that particular player, person, and it enhances your life. And so even though they may be totally different, it makes me a better person, maybe even a better player. And so we spend time, you know, talking about our different backgrounds. Um, I've, I've shared, the guys will tell you that I've, I've shared a number of stories about my background. Um, so they know where I'm coming from when I say certain things. And I think it's important that, that teams do that. I, I learned a lot of that from Pop. Um, you know, he, he loved to have different cultures and different people from all over the world on the team because there, there was beauty in our differences. And so it's something that's a part of our culture. Um, I, I love hearing about where guys came from and how they grew up. And it sometimes you find something in that that helps you reach that guy or relate to him in a better way. And I think that's, that's the beauty of sport. You know, we, we just, we, all of us want to win. We want to compete um, and, and all the other stuff doesn't matter. Color and all the silliness that we, we tend to fight over in, in, in our country. When we're, when we're on the floor in the locker room, on the bus or on the plane, and we, we're just a team. And that's, it's a beautiful thing.